Hello and welcome to the astrology series in the Blueprint of the Universe where we're looking at, um, at the moment, obviously astrology and um, what it really is, but we're discussing individual planets or devices that can be applied to every vibrational uh, state at the microcosm, microcosmic levels. Um, as yes, it is a planet, yes, it does affect us, however, it's not just about that, it's about identifying that key concept or symbolic aspect that can affect things equally on all levels as the universe copies itself in patterns and systems throughout the different scales of what we see around us. Um, <clears throat> and we looked at uh, Jupiter and Mars working together, the physical and the energetic, and we actually come to our sixth uh, position now, our sixth planet. Now this is where it gets interesting because we've been relating this back to um, the Kabbalah, as the Kabbalah is a very um, uh, accurate concept of how the planets work together with one another and their positions, um, and kind of the more spiritual and um, all-inclusive concept. So when we look at the Kabbalah, we see actually the number six is um, it's very controversial in a way, but only if you don't know what you're looking for. Now, we did mention this in the beginning of what the Kabbalah is to the um, astrology. However, let's just quickly recap that. So we know that the sixth planet in from the outside of a solar system is Earth. But the Kabbalah says that the sixth position is the sun. Now, this is where it gets very interesting. We have to look at the two different types of um, map of the uh, solar system. We have the heliocentric, um, and we have the earth-centric, um, kind of a more, we have the, the more modern version and, and the older version, where in the older version, the uh, planet earth is at the centre of the solar system, which we all know physics-wise um, physics and uh, factually-wise, that's not correct. The sun is at the centre of the solar system. So one could argue that yes, all the Kabbalah is old, it uses the old system, where everybody thought, uh, you know, the Earth was at the centre of a solar system, but that's not true because the Kabbalah doesn't have the Earth at the centre, it has the Sun. Because if we look at the map from above, we see that the Sun is in the centre, it's the number six position. However, in the stages of one to nine, it has the Sun in the centre, which puts it in Earth position. So you could say, well, yes, actually, we do put it put the Earth in the centre because the Sun is considered one of the planets on the outside, if that makes sense. So it depends which viewpoint you look at it, but that's the key, is it's what viewpoint do you look at it from. Yes, the Sun is in the centre of the universe, uh, it's in the centre of the solar system, but we don't live on the Sun. And we're looking at how the planets and the solar system affect us. So you can't have it both ways. You can't have the sun in the centre of a solar system, but then look at us, how everything affects us, and not put us at the centre of the study. And that's the key thing there. It's where is the point of view? What affects what and why? Yes, everything affects the sun and the planet, both. But when we look at it as a study, we are looking at it from a, a person point of view, a human point of view, and therefore we put Earth in the centre of the solar system, which is what the true meaning of that system was. And then it got lost because it got taught to the masses, oh yes, the Earth is at the centre of the solar system, but nobody really explained to them why, and it became a common concept, and then it got forgotten that actually, that's not what they meant, that's just a concept, a point of view. And then, um, hundreds of years later, it was big controversy that actually the sun was the centre of the solar system. But we actually knew that in the old days anyway, it's just not what they meant when they passed it on to the masses. Um, that's, and there's a lot of context to back that up, because if you look at the older systems, it actually does put the sun at the centre, but points out that we uh, look at things from a human point of view. Um, with that aside, so when we look at the Kabbalah, and the sixth position, the central position, it's actually interchangeable depending on your point of view of the earth and the sun. Now there's no point to us talking about how the earth 
on its rotation affects the human body because yes it does according to the seasons but the reason it has seasons is because the sun is affecting it so actually what we look at when we look at the number six is the direct relationship between the sun and the earth without any other planets in the way or as a um, when we look at Mars it's actually how the sun affects Mars that affects the planet earth it's an indirect version but actually when we're looking at earth and the sun it's just a direct straight from here to there how does the sun affect the earth and that's why the two positions are interchangeable on the Kabbalah and the tree of life and interestingly the number six or the sixth position represents the solar plexus of the human body which is the center of the torso which is where all the other joints, all the other organs, all the other limbs, all rotate around to create the cosmic solar system of the human body. And this is why when they say they worship the sun, they worship the center. It's the center of all things, the body um, or the sun. And without getting too distracted, so when we look at this, this is actually our typical sun sign that we all see in the horoscope of the newspaper. It's the one out of the nine concepts. And yes, it is important because the sun's energy is obviously directly important to us as it creates seasons, it creates weather patterns, it heats the planet, it cools the planet, um, depending where we are rotating around it. Um, so yes, it's very important, but it's only one aspect of the nine relationships that all contribute. And the sun is generally Apart from obviously the slight rotation of the elliptical orbit and the angle of tilt of the planet, which is the planet's fault, uh, Earth's, Earth's issue, not the sun, because the sun doesn't move. It's spherical, it's the Earth's changing uh, positions that actually affect it from the sun, not the sun. Um, you know, it's actually fairly consistent all the year round compared to, for example, when. Um, Mars might pass close to Earth at one point, but then be, uh, you know, hundreds of thousands of miles away on the other side. So there's a lot more of a variation of a change. So actually, the Sun is quite consistent, and therefore, what we consider to be the most powerful change, which is where we get the horoscopes from, actually has little effect because it's consistent, very, very consistent. So your Sun sign which we use in astrology all the time, is not that important at all. So you're being fed a very simple way of saying astrology is there, but that's it. It's very base, it's very loose. If someone can try and tell you who you are or how the world affects you or the universe or how astrology works just by telling you about your sun sign, then um, you need to look elsewhere. Um, with that aside, uh, it's, I mean, it's still an important factor. The sun powers all things, so don't forget that. It does power all things. It's direct energy straight to us. Without the sun, none of the other planets would uh, orbit um, or exist or generate energy. So that's the thing. So when we look at the sun uh, and the gods that have betrayed the sun, usually, apart from, for example... Um, the sun is either portrayed as the highest god or a not a very important god and it's actually kind of again interchangeable between the two because it's the perspective that the actual sun god when it's represented as the higher the higher one um, is usually representing something else or a symbolic version of the sun not the sun itself whereas the more um, kind of actualizations of a sun power tend to be less significant such as Apollo. Apollo was not a particularly high god. He was, he was quite powerful but he wasn't he wasn't like Zeus or Hades or Poseidon. And Apollo was the god of the sun um, and Helios was also the god of the sun. And again these weren't massive high up deities. Um, they were just aspects of the greater universe that were controlled by the higher powers of the higher gods which were later planets that we've already looked at in the positions of one, two, and three. 
So that's why number six is the sun, because it's, it is important, but it's actually not as important as um, first positions. So we get to see really what the sun sign is and, and how it relates to astrology. Um, because the story of the gods and the Greek gods is a way of trying to teach uh, the powers, concepts and um, kind of personality types of astrology. And that's what it is, in effect. And uh, again, we look further back and, well, you know, obviously when people came out of the caves and the sun was the first thing we saw, it was the Almighty, but it was a representation of, of the universe as a whole. When we look at Ammon, um, or uh, in the Egyptian sense, or kind of, um, you know, some people say that God uh, in the Christian religion is a representation of the sun when we look at the Holy Wafer during the Holy Communion. Um, but equally, it could be the moon. It's, uh, again, it's point of perspective. But um, and pagan, you know, generally have uh, the sun quite high up in the in the pantheon. But again, that's just a representation of uh, the source of all power, of all all universe, as it is. But strictly speaking, so the sun and the earth are interchangeable in their astrology terms. Um, so we can use one to explain the other. Uh, and it's really kind of a representation of um, when we look at the sun sign, it's more the planet Earth and where it is in its seasons um, in relation to the zodiac and the other planets. Uh, so again, it's it's not it's probably the least important of um, of all the concepts. And just before we finish, let's look at the metallurgy alchemical. Um, sign for the sun and again the actual symbol is a circle with a dot in it whereas the symbol for the earth is a circle with a cross in it again the cross being the four directions of the world like jupiter so it's it's uh, very similar but when we look at the circle and the dot it's the dot that's the microcosm to the greater circle around it the macrocosm and therefore it is a symbol of the solar system effectively um, as a whole, uh, which again is powered by the sun, which drives the solar system. So yes, the sun is the center, but it's also the sum of because it powers it and it creates all of it. Um, but equally on a metallurgic scale, it's uh, the metal gold because gold is extremely precious. It's extremely valuable. Obviously it glows um, like the sun, you know, like a yellowy, um, gold color obviously um, it's the reflective it shines in the sun um, very precious quite relatively rare but not as rare as you might think and that's the other thing how many you know we always say yes gold is a rare metal but how you know the entire world's economic system is is meant to be based on how much gold each country has now if you add all that up that's a lot of gold and it's all sat somewhere and all the jewelry in the world is pretty commonplace now gold rings gold necklaces gold chains you know gold is not really an expensive metal anymore so it's almost like a perceived value of what gold is um, and it's used in everything it's used in phones circuit boards electronics um, you know it's, it's, it's pretty commonplace but it is kind of everywhere equally. It does drive everything as well because money drives the world and, and money represents gold and currency. Um, and so this idea of obviously the alchemists trying to create gold is not strictly speaking true because obviously we know that um, gold is a, is a metaphysical concept of the universe. And again, you've got gold as the sun and gold as the universe it's a two-sided coin and what they were trying to make is the universe made manifest which is the sun so it's like well gold symbolizes the sun but the sun symbolizes the universe and so the idea is to create something to be one with the universe so it's like a step process it, um, it's it, it's that's why alchemy is very difficult to understand unless you're kind of in the system because there's 
symbols representing symbols representing concepts and philosophies representing other you know it's endless unless you know where to go with the systems and chains of understanding you'll never really realize what someone a true alchemist is trying to talk to you about which is part of the fun it's part of the part of the process and the learning um but yeah so the philosopher's stone is the concept of creating or achieving a golden state in a trans um, um a transmutational kind of uh, concept of alchemy it's in a mental state it's becoming one with the universe but we know from the kabbalah that gold or the sun or the central point of six is a copy of number one when we look at the structure it goes one splits into two and three which creates four and five which joins back together to create six because it's a balance of energy and matter um, which reflects as a, a new version of the singularity of a one so it's the universe that's spread out enough to copy itself but it's kind of almost the opposite of what it set out to be. So it's the physical version of itself. It's like, for example, if, let's say, God tried to recreate himself on Earth. If he did so, let's say, and made a person that was him, if God was a person, let's say, um, then, yes, let's say he would be God, that person that's on the planet, but it's not, it's the opposite form because it's the lower form made out of physical material, not the higher self, if that gets what I mean. So it's like a copy on the reverse scale of himself. So even though it is him itself, it's not, it's the opposite form, like an imitation. That's what gold is. It's an imitation of the universe. Whereas like the earth, is an imitation of the universe trying to create itself because like we said the macrocosm the microcosm the universe is reflected on the planet earth through its different cycles its systems it's uh, even the human body is a version of the universal pattern um, and so earth is the sun is the universe we get quite complex there so with this one it's probably gone a little bit off topic with the concept of the planet but that's how we need to look at each of the planets it's not just a planet it's a concept that can affect all these different multi-vibrational levels uh, and create changes so when we look at the sun sign it's just a very basic sense of <clears throat> the universe and it's almost like um it's a point to be expanded upon so if we say yes the sun at this particular point of time was in this particular star sign but it would be the year after as well equally and that's what i mean about consistency so every year every reading from the sun sign would be technically the same if we did a sun reading now and then did it next year exactly the same time it should be the same because it's passing through the same circular orbit. So it's very limited, the yearly cycle. Whereas all the other planets have different cycles and rotation rates and orbits and tilts. And so have all different, you would never have the same combination. It's extremely rare to get the same position of all the planets at the same time. Each, like every couple of hundred years, so to have something that could be the same potential meaning every year consistently, that's why we have solstices, because we know that every summer solstice is, strictly speaking, the same in position relation to the sun and the earth. And so it's more of a reliability timepiece, a constant, a um, something we can use to measure the other planets within. I hope that's give you some information on what the Earth and Sun and number six is in the astrology um, and also the Kabbalah, but hopefully it's, it's given you a lot to think about, but also answer some questions equally. If you do have any questions about any of these 
subjects or points, please put a comment in and I'll try and explain individually further. Or if there is something a bit more um, questionable or something someone wants answering, maybe I can make a separate video on it.